بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبيه الكريم عليه صلوات ربي وسلامه أما بعد My dear sisters and brothers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Thank you very much for joining me in this program The Great Women in Islam produced by Mazlina Ismail Alhamdulillah Last time we finished the story of Maryam alayhi salam and today we are going to start a new story. It's a story of a beautiful queen. She had all what any woman dreams to have. Beauty, power, wealth, jewelry, palaces, gardens, slaves, everything. But subhanallah, she decided to give up everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know who she is? Yes, she is Asya, wife of Fir'aun, wife of Fir'aun. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned her as one of the greatest women of all time. And also Al-Quran al-Kareem mentioned her in two occasions. The first one in Surah Al-Qasas, when she protected Musa alayhi salam from being killed by Fir'aun. The second one in the end of Surah Al-Tahrim, when she declared her faith in Allah and she was tortured to death. So today, let's start with the first occasion when she protected Musa alayhi salam from being killed by Fir'aun. So as we know the story, Al-Kahana, the south sayers of Fir'aun, had notified him that an Israeli man would rise to overthrow him and put an end to his life. To escape that terrible destiny, Fir'aun subhanallah had ordered his soldiers to kill all male newborns of Bani Israel. Musa's mother, when she gave birth to her son, she worried. What would happen to him if the Fir'aun's uh, soldiers were uh, informed of him? But alhamdulillah subhanallah, at that critical moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired her inspire her like he mentioned in the Quran and can be translated to so we sent this inspiration to the mother of Musa suckle him but when you have fears about him cast him into the river but fear not nor grieve for we shall for we shall restore him to you and we shall make him one of our messengers so the mother, Musa's mother, put him in a wooden box and pushed it into the Nile River. But subhanAllah, in that morning, Asya was sitting by the Nile and suddenly she saw a small box heading for the green bank. She ordered her guard to bring her uh, the box and when she saw the baby, she became attached to him. Of course, Fir'aun was furious to see that little baby because he can recognize from, it means from his face, he is not an Egyptian boy. He is from Bani Israel. So we have to apply the rule. We have to apply the law. We have to kill him. But Asya alayhi salam, she said, like the Quran mentioned, here is a joy for the eye, for me and for you. Don't kill him. It may be that he will be of use to us or we may adopt him as a son. So in the end of the day, Fir'aun was convinced and he accepted and Musa was raised in Fir'aun's palace as Fir'aun's son and he was called the Prince Musa. This is the short story how Asia protected Musa from being killed by Fir'aun. Now, what are 
the lessons that we can learn from this short story. Actually, there is many, many important lessons. But today, I like to choose four lessons. Let's start with the first one. The first lesson we can learn from this short story is that don't judge people from their exterior. Everyone, my dear sisters and brother, has a story left and told. So that's why we shouldn't judge people as if we, we know their entire life story. Because the reality, the truth is, we probably don't. In the case of Asia, despite being married to the greatest tyrant of all time and surrounded by injustice, she was very different from Pharaoh. He was cruel. She was merciful. He was a tyrant. She was delicate and good-hearted. She was depleased with her husband's wicked deed. Not because she is Pharaoh's wife, it means she is Sratos Pratos like him. No, we cannot judge people uh, from their exterior or their family or their relative. But uh, suddenly, uh, or uh, I mean, unfortunately, many times we do so. So sometimes when we see some women, some women or girls, they are not wearing their tudun or they come from no religious family. We immediately accuse them that they are bad and they don't deserve our respect. But actually we don't know what is inside their heart. Only Allah knows. Only Allah knows. Maybe they are living in very challenging environment and they are still working hard to at least practice the fundamental act of worshipping in Islam, like performing Salat, fasting Ramadan, because in their family, in their environment, only fanatic people fast and pray. Maybe also they are working hard to be modest and pure and not being involved in haram relationship. So we don't know. That's why we shouldn't feel that we are better than them. Only Allah knows who is the best. But we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blessed us and make commitment easy for us. So don't judge, judge people for, from their exterior because judging people avoid us from understanding their circumstances. It avoid us from understanding the hardship they are going through. And of course, it avoid us from having the will to help them to find the right path. We are not ready to help because we already judge them. They are bad. And it will also affect our sincerity and uh, humbleness toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we, we may feel we are better than others. And this is not right. We don't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who is uh, the best. So the first lesson is don't, don't judge people from their exterior. Let's move to the second lesson. Second lesson is a very important and powerful lesson. The second lesson says, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to protect you, no one will hurt you. And he will protect you in a way you never expected. Musa's mother never expect that Pharaoh's wife is the one who is going to protect Musa from being killed by Pharaoh. She, she, she never expect that. But Asya, radiallahu anha, did. The moment she saw Musa, she loved him. She became attached to him. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect Musa. Allah said in the Quran, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِنِّي I made you attractive and valuable. So anyone saw Musa, he just loved him. So, and this is what happened also to Asya. When she saw him, she loved him and she became attached to him. And she refused that Fir'aun will kill him. So that's why the lesson is, if Allah is in your side, no one can hurt you. But if he is not, no one can defend you. So we have always to be in Allah's side. So he will protect and defend and defend us. This is a great lesson that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught it to 
Ibn Abbas when he was less than 13 years old. This very important lesson, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi taught it to Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu when he was less than 13 years old. In the famous hadith uh, re reported by Tirmidhi, uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu reports, one day I was behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said to me, young man, I will teach you some words. Be mindful of God, of Allah, and he will take care of you. Be mindful of him and you shall find him at your side. If you ask, ask of Allah. If you need help, seek it from Allah. Know that if the whole world were together, together, if the whole world were to gather together in order to help you, they would not be able to help you except if Allah had written so. And if the whole world were together, together in order to harm you, they would not harm you except if Allah had written so. The pens have been lifted and the page, pages are dry. So this wonderful hadith, in this wonderful hadith, Nabi Sallallahu taught Ibn Abbas that you don't have to fear people or fear shaitan or fear ghost or fear hantu or fear dolls that we, we, that we are teaching our children to, to fear. Just fear Allah and full stop. If you fear Allah, you love him, you know him, you are close to him, you obey him, you submit, full submission to him, so Allah is in your side. If Allah in, is in your side, no one can hurt you, no one can harm you. Maybe some people will tell, but you know, in our daily life, we can see many people disturbing us and causing problem for us. Okay, this is the hardship. They can disturb you. They can do their best to, to, to cause a problem for you. But if Allah is in your side, you will survive. He will defend you. He will protect you. And this hardship will stronger you, will make you strong. And in the end of the day, this hardship will be in your favor. You will benefit from it. Like he did with Ibrahim alayhi salam, with Yusuf alayhi salam, with Musa, with Isa, with all. So enhance your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is what will protect you from any harm. Of course, um, it's very important to mention that in educating our children, especially in this young age, uh, less than 13, uh, most of the time we concentrate about teaching them the adab, the adab of eating, of going to the toilet, of uh, many things. And this is very important. Behavior is very important. Akhlaq is very important. But from this hadith, we understand that the most important thing, the priority is to teach them the aqeedah, to help them to understand and to build a strong relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to believe deeply if they are in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sure, sratos pratos, Allah will help them, will protect them, will defend them. No one can hurt them. Can you imagine? how our children will become very strong with this strong aqeedah. But nowadays, parents, sometimes even some teachers in the school, if they want to, to control the child and to make him uh, a very good child, obeying the orders, they will just uh, try to make him uh, afraid of uh, a shaitan, uh, the ghost, uh, hantu, dolls, uh, Bumu, Allahu Akbar. We have to know, my dear sisters and brothers, in this way we are destroying the aqidah of our children. A shaitan is a weak creature. He becomes strong only when we are weak. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us, just mention the name of Allah, a shaitan will run away. And the same for other creatures. 
So fear the creator, don't fear the creation. So this is a very, very important lesson we learn from the story of Asya alayhi salam. The third lesson, the third lesson is the importance of convincing skills, negotiating skills, communicating skills, all these kind of skills in developing Muslim woman personality. So we saw in the story that Asya alayhi salam wanted really to protect Musa. But clearly this is not an easy duty. This is not an easy uh, mission. Why? Because this means that she need to break Fir'aun rule, Fir'aun law, and this is not easy. Because Fir'aun, he wasn't an um, ordinary president or ordinary uh, king. He was claiming that he is God. So breaking this rule, it means breaking God's rule. So it wasn't easy. But from the story, we learn that Asya alayhi salam, she managed to convince Fir'aun not to kill Musa. And not just that, she convinced him to adopt or to adopt Musa as a son. Allahu Akbar. How she was able to do so, to convince Fir'aun to adopt Musa as a son. She did it because she has the skill. She had the skill. First, she chose a soft and a wise manner. She was talking to Fir'aun as a soft, loving wife. Please don't kill him. But actually, this is not enough to convince Fir'aun not to kill Musa and to adopt him as a son. She had to find the weaknesses of Fir'aun and use it to convince him. Fir'aun didn't have bows, he, he didn't have sons, he had only daughters. And he wished to have a baby boy. This is the key of Fir'aun's personality. So Asya alayhi salam, she used this key. So we don't have boy and we wish and you sure my beloved husband, you wish to have a boy. So let's adopt this baby as, uh, as our son. Of course, uh, Fir'aun, he, was, he, will, he can see from his, the face of this baby that he is not Egyptian. Like I said, he is from Bani Israel. But to adopt him, as, adopt him as a son, it means you don't have to worry, my dear husband, because why? He, we will raise him in our palace. We will give him the palace education. We will make him uh, belong to us, not to Bani Israel. We will raise him in our, in our, uh, according to our system. So don't worry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Quran al-Kareem, وَقَالَتِ امْرَأَةُ فِرْعَوْنَ قُرَّةُ عَيْنٍ لِي وَلَكْ لَا تَقْتُلُوهُ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعَنَا أَوْ نَتَّخِذَهُ وَلَدًا وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ and the wife of Fir'aun said, he will be a comfort of the eye for me and for you. Do not kill him. Perhaps he may benefit us or we may adopt him as a son. From this story, we learn that one of the most important skills Muslim women must master is convincing skills, negotiating skills, communication skills, and so on. Why? Very simple. Because the cause of the majority of family conflicts and marital conflicts is the lack of these skills. Of course, we should agree that disagreement is a normal part of life. It can occur uh, between family members, employees, committee members. But the problem is, is when a simple disagreement turns to conflict. Some people think that happy family equal no disagreement. This is not right. This is false. Happiness is not the absence of problems, but is the ability to deal with them. So disagreement is, is a normal part of life. Allah create us different. We have a different way of thinking. We have different experience. We, we are just different. So it's normal to disagree. But the problem, how to manage our disagreement? 
how to manage our disagreement and not allow it or let it to become a conflict and this that destroy all the families relations so when you master this kind of skills you don't need to destroy your relation with your husband and children in order to convince them with your opinion if you do so my dear sisters you lose more than you win sure many girls when they think about getting ready to for marriage they think more about the wedding dress the color the design the wedding hall the honeymoon and this is okay there is no thing wrong in this but sure they need other more important things when the wedding is over the honeymoon is over and the real life starts the real mission start as wife as daughter in law as sister in law as mom they really need these skills to survive to be happy and to enjoy their life with their beloved one so dear sisters dear mothers it's these skills that make your family a happy family and we know that a happy family is but an earlier heaven i can hear some Uh, sister saying but you don't know ustaza uh, you know you don't know my husband my husband is a very difficult man his personality is very difficult he is very harsh he is that he is uh, this and it, i believe you sister i know some husband they are a very difficult husband but i know also and i am sure also that your husband is not firaun sratos pratos He is not as bad as Firaun who claimed to be God and massacre generation of newborns because as he was able to convince Firaun not only not to kill Musa but to adopt him as a son so if you have as his skills convincing skills negotiating skills communication skills you can do it you can do it i am i am sure you can do it Let's move to the fourth lesson. The fourth lesson it says life is a test. That's why you can't have everything. There is always something missing. This is life. In the case of Asiya alayhi salam, really she was a queen. She had beauty, power, wealth, palaces, jewelry. But subhanallah, her husband was the worst man on earth. So can you imagine a greatest woman of all time married to the greatest tyrant of all time I can hear you laughing yeah I am laughing too but this is the reality and this reality also we can find it in our daily life in our environment sometimes we find some people they are very rich they have big house they are happy uh the man is happy with his wife and the wife is happy with the husband and they are very happy family uh healthy family enjoying a good health but they don't have children no children something is missing another family they have wonderful and healthy children 5 6 7 sometimes 10 uh but not enough money to educate these children to take care of them in the correct way some money is missing sometimes you find some people or some family some couple they have money alhamdulillah they have children they have a big wa- a house they have a, a good job but they are sick they have a chronic disease they are not enjoying anything in this life because they are very sick the majority of their time they are spending their time in the hospital they wish if they can give all their wealth to become a healthy again but no way so this is life life is a test we can't have everything always there is something missing so that's why we don't have to waste our time asking why this happened to me and uh, challenging allah ya allah why you gave me this or you didn't give me that why we don't have to do that because life is test we have to do our best to overcome the hardship and to learn from it and become stronger 
and benefit from it the maximum we can. And we have to remember always that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us to increase our Iman and our trust in Him. We have always to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us to strengthen us, not to weaken us. We should always do our best to overcome the hardship. May Allah make us among those who listen to the word and follow the best thereof. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.